This is 6 Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com. Hello and welcome to 6 Minute English from BBC Learning English. I'm Rob and joining me today is Jen. Hi. Hi Jen. Now, I'm sure like everyone else, you heard the news recently about the cruise ship, the Costa Concordia, which hit some rocks and capsized or overturned. Yes, I did hear. It really was a dreadful story. Terrible news for everyone involved. Yeah, it was a terrible disaster. People have been discussing and speculating how it happened and particularly about the actions of the captain. In today's programme, we're talking about what is and what isn't acceptable behaviour for the captain of a ship during a disaster at sea. In other words, the captain's etiquette. But Rob, shouldn't we start with a question? Uh, of course, I hadn't forgotten. As we're talking about ships, I wonder if you know how heavy the world's biggest cruise ship, Oasis of the Seas, weighs. Is it 2,500 tonnes, 25,000 tonnes or 250,000 tonnes? Well, I can honestly say I've got no idea about how much a cruise ship would weigh, but I guess if it's the world's biggest, I'll go for the biggest number, 250,000 tonnes. OK, well, I'll reveal the answer at the end of the programme. So today we're talking about the role of the captain on a ship. In the recent disaster involving the Costa Concordia, it was alleged the captain abandoned ship before all his passengers had escaped. Well, whether this is true or not, what should the captain do in such a situation? Well, when the famous ship Titanic sank in 1912, the captain was the last on board. Mm, very heroic. And let's hear from another heroic man, Lord West of Spithead. He used to be the professional head of the British Royal Navy, what is called the First Sea Lord. He was captain of HMS Ardent in the Falklands War and was the last man on board when it sank. So he understands why abandoning ship is never an option for a captain, even during a disaster. Here he is speaking to the BBC's James Nocte about the history of this captain's etiquette. What does he say is expected of a captain? Uh, well, I think it's a very important uh, a custom and a rule. It goes, if you think back to things like the Titanic, the Lusitania, you know, the captain stayed on the bridge until they were washed off as the ship sank. And I think it is expected of a captain to remain on board to look after the safety and security of his people until the last one has gone. So, in a disaster, he thinks staying at the ship's controls, or what is called the bridge, is an important custom and rule. It's the expected behaviour. Yes, it's what people expect the captain to do. He is responsible for the safety and security of his passengers until the last one has gone. On the Titanic, the captain was finally washed off the bridge as it sank. But even if captains are obeying the rules or doing what they think is right, there could be something else that compels them to stay on board. This is something that the BBC's James Nocte asked Lord West of Spithead. It's more than that, isn't it? It's, it's more than a practical question of, you know, being in charge until the, the rescue is complete. It, it, it's something that's in the DNA of a seagoing person. It's unthinkable, isn't it? That it, it just... It goes utterly against the grain yep. to be anything but the last man off. That, that, that is absolutely right. It's a core aspect of duty. So, that's James Nocte, suggesting that staying until everyone is off the ship is part of a captain's DNA. It's in their genes. He used a good phrase, it goes utterly against the grain. It goes against the grain to be anything but the last man off. In other words, you do the opposite of what is usually done. Mm, or you're not willing to abandon ship because it contradicts what you believe in. And Lord West of Spithead agrees. He says it's a core aspect of duty. It's the most important part. Basically, the ship is the captain's top priority, even more important than his wife and family. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? And Lord West of Spithead uses a name to describe what captains call their ships. Have a listen to this. And certainly in the Royal Navy, it's referred to as your grey mistress because you, you spend more time looking after your ship and you know, being with your ship and everything than you ever do with your, your wife, your family. And it, it is, it's an absolute part of you. And there comes a stage where you will fight like mad to keep your sa ship safe and to look after it and secure it. And then you have to make a decision that it's too late, the ship is going to go. You then have to look after your people and the people you're responsible for. Ha! He says in the Royal Navy the ship is referred to as your grey mistress because the captain spends more time with her than his wife. <laughs> and the captain will do everything in his power to save the ship and all the people on board if it's about to sink. Hmm, but I wonder if this is a bit of an old-fashioned custom and maybe everyone should just try to save themselves. Hmm, I don't think a captain would ever think about doing that. Maybe. So have you given any thought to my question? I asked you if you know how much does the world's biggest cruise ship, Oasis of the Seas, weigh? Is it 2,500 tonnes, 
25,000 tonnes or 250,000 tonnes. And I said I thought it might be 250,000 tonnes. Do you know what, Jen? You're right. Oh, <laughs> well done. Wow. Yes, the Oasis of the Seas weighs more than 250,000 tonnes. It can carry 6,000 people and it has more than 3,000 miles of electrical cabling. That's about the distance from London to New York. That's a big ship for a captain to be responsible for. OK, Jen, well, we've just got time for you to remind us of some of the vocabulary that we've heard today. Yes, we heard capsized, speculating, etiquette, abandoned, heroic, custom, compels, genes, contradicts, mistress. Thanks a lot, Jen. And that's all we've got time for in today's programme. Please do join us again for more Six Minute English on our website at bbclearningenglish.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. That was Six Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com.